Hi, my name is Dr. LaTanya Hickson. I'm a nephrologist here at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm here to talk to you about our article entitled, Younger Adults Initiating Hemodialysis, Antidepressant Use for Depression Associated with Higher Healthcare Utilization. This will be published in an upcoming issue in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Depression is prevalent in young adult patients starting hemodialysis therapy. We found that patients taking antidepressant therapy for mood indication were more likely to have frequent hospitalizations during their first year of hemodialysis. Now, we may not be able to identify all patients with depression, but at a minimum, we should know that these young new dialysis patients who are treated for depression may need additional resources to help them cope with the transition to end-stage kidney failure and the health issues surrounding this condition. Overall, we retrospectively studied 130 young adults aged 18 to 44 years who had end-stage kidney failure and required hemodialysis at Mayo Clinic. These patients were followed up to a year and we assessed the frequency and cause of their hospitalizations and emergency department visits without a hospital following that. And we looked at these individuals and we're trying to assess the association between depression, defined as depression on antidepressant therapy, and their healthcare utilization in this first year. Interestingly, 36% of young dialysis patients had a diagnosis of depression at the start of dialysis. However, less than a quarter of this entire cohort of patients was on antidepressant therapy. Now, what characterized the group that was on the treatment? They generally had more diabetes, more with diabetes, heart disease, and heart failure. And when we look at the hospitalization and emergency department rates, we found that they were significantly higher in individuals that were on antidepressant therapy compared to those that were untreated. For example, in figure one, you'll see that within 60 days of dialysis start, individuals that were on antidepressant therapy, over half of them had already been in the hospital at least one or more times. In comparison, those that were not on antidepressant therapy, it took over 200 days before half of that cohort had had at least one hospitalization. In the sum of looking at this from a risk perspective, we found that individuals that were on antidepressant therapy were more than twofold likely to have a hospitalization, either one or more hospitalizations, in that first year of dialysis. One of my favorite figures is figure three, and this beautifully illustrates the difficulties and complexities related to care of young adults in that first year of dialysis. If we look at the mosaic plots for individuals and we're only focusing on those on antidepressant therapy, we see how the course can be for that first year in some individuals, whereas other individuals go an entire year without a hospitalization. And where we need to focus is on those individuals that need the most resources to make that first year more livable. At Mayo Clinic, we have the luxury of an integrated healthcare system with integrated medical records and providers um, that are all connected. And this allows our research to give a more total overview, a broader picture on an individual level of what's happening with these patients. And this is in contrast to what we see mainly in the literature where we utilize administrative billing claims that may or may not paint the most accurate picture of what's happening to these patients. I've always been passionate about exploring ways to identify who will have the toughest time adjusting to the many challenges of dialysis initiation. As doctors, we're so excited that we got them through their near-death period in time. We got them from the ICU and we brought them to the floor and ultimately dismissed them. Well, unfortunately, we left behind potentially healthy kidneys or kidneys that weren't healthy have now completely lost their momentum and they are faced with a new reality of doing maintenance hemodialysis three to four times weekly for three to four hours 
during those periods. This invokes a lot of lifestyle changes, a loss of freedom, and a loss of ideas for what can happen in the future for many young patients. It's hard for even the older patients, but definitely for young people that had their whole life ahead of them. All is not to be lost, but we need to find ways to focus on these individuals to make this transition better for them. What does the patient get out of this? Well, hopefully this allows the patient to relax, knowing that they're not alone in their adjustment. The young adult patients make up around 11% of the end-stage renal disease or ESRD patient population. They have the highest hospitalization rates. It may be that they're crying out for help, but I hope that with this study, we're reaffirming that they too may need more attention in more ways than one. Finding ways to improve the transition from normal or near normal life to beginning a new life on dialysis is very important. My personal goal is to find ways to slow the trajectory of kidney failure to delay the progression of this kidney disease so hopefully their time that they ever need dialysis is removed or replaced. In the meanwhile, however, we can do our best to focus quality efforts to improve the lives of individuals with kidney disease, particularly during this first year. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about health care at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.